hello welcome back to my channel in today's lesson we will be looking at introduction to biology the first thing that we are going to look at is the definition of biology then we will also look at it. distinguish between living organisms and non-living organisms or living things we also look at identify the characteristics of living organisms let us begin by looking at the definition of the word biology the word biology consists of two Greek words, namely bowels and logos. The word bowels means life and logos means study. Therefore, the word biology means the study of living things. So the, the living things studied in biology are animals such as the zebra, the giraffe, the elephant, the kangaroo, and human beings themselves, and other living things also studied are plants, such as this plant here. Now, let us look at the differences between living organisms and non-living things or non-living organisms. So here we are looking at distinguish between living organisms and the non-living organisms or things. So on this side of the, on the left side of the page we have living things and also on the right side of the page we will have none living things so let us look at their differences so number one living things can grow as you can see here we have a baby so this baby won't remain permanently forever at this stage so the baby is going to change the size so the baby will be growing live non-living things cannot grow so as you can see we have stones here as an example of non-living things stones cannot grow if you leave them for a longer longer period of time they will not grow they will remain the same Living things can move. Non-living things cannot move. Living things can feed, e.g. they need food and water for them to grow. Like these two kids here, they are eating some food because they need it for energy and they need it also for their growth but non-living things cannot feed living things can breathe non-living things cannot breathe living things can reproduce like you are seeing here two couples a woman and a man reproducing new ones so they have two kids these two kids were reproduced by these two couples in our picture none living things cannot reproduce as you can look at this car it is just alone here it can never reproduce another car because none living things cannot reproduce Living things can feel or sense. 
e.g. they respond to stimuli like these two couples here these are human beings they have emotions they respond to the external environment whenever something wrong is said to these human beings these human beings will respond for example if one of their kids dies these living things which the, which are these two families will start mourning for their kid because that they will be responding they have the senses of love so they love their kids so if one of them dies definitely they are going to cry because they are able to feel that love for their kids non-living things unfortunately cannot sense they have no senses look at this house this house has got no senses whatsoever it is not even aware that it is it exists whatever can be done to it either internally or externally it will not be able to sense whatsoever then living things die while non living things cannot die now let us look at characteristics of living organisms as seen from the differences between living things and non living things living organisms have the following characteristics movement respiration growth reproduction excretion and nutrition let us look at each one of these characteristics of living things individually so that you get to know what they are so we are starting with nutrition nutrition is the process by which living organisms obtain their food from the environment so living things obtain their food from their environment they need the food for growth for energy and for other life saving processes for example these two kids they are eating food because they need it for their health they need it also for their growth and they also need it for energy and also they need it for life for them to remain alive they need food so the process by which living organisms obtain their food from the environment is what we call nutrition so non living things as already seen do not or have got no or they don't have this characteristic of nutrition characteristics of living things continuation the process by which animals obtain food from their surrounding is called heterotrophic nutrition while the process by which plants obtain food is called autotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition is the type of nutrition where an organism makes its own food for example plants they make their own food from the sun by the process called photosynthesis so plants they get the sun or they get the light energy from the sun and carbon dioxide and water combine these to make their own food so these plants make their own food by the process called 
autotrophic nutrition. So during their own food, they evolve a process called photosynthesis. Heterotrophic nutrition is the type of nutrition where an organism takes in food present in bodies of others. So as you can see here, we have trees and also we have grass. So animals like the hippo will feed on the grass. Why? Because the grass contains the food in it which the hippo needs. The hippo cannot make its own food like plants do. So the hippo needs to feed on the food already made by the plants. Also the kettle here is feeding. Also this one, this animal which looks like a dike and another animal here which looks like a gazelle or so. So these animals, they are feeding on already made food in plants. So this kind of nutrition is what we call heterotrophic nutrition. Characteristics of living things continuation. Growth. So living things undergo growth, but non-living things, they don't undergo. So growth is a characteristic of living things or living organisms. So growth is a permanent increase in size, mass, number of cells, and complexity of an organism. As you can see in this picture, so we have a living organism here as a baby, and we see the baby growing in size and also mass through teenager, adulthood, and also now this living organism as a human being that was a baby. Now it is old, so it has increased both in size and mass and also the number of cells and also complex it in terms of how big now the body is and how big the cells are and many processes going on because this living organism is growing the biological processes like reproduction which are not yet functional at the stage of a baby now at the maturity the functional hormones or those producing chemicals the making the now complex now so that growth permanent growth in size mass number of cells and complexity is a characteristic of living things non living things they don't grow Local motion is another characteristic of living organisms. So what is locomotion? Locomotion, we are saying most organisms are able to move their whole body. So locomotion is the ability of full living organisms to move their whole body. So somebody may ask, what about plants? Do they move? Yes, even plants can shift their stem towards the sunlight and their roots towards healthy soil. For example, if a plant is put in a room, in a room and the plant is actually maybe closer to a window which is able to receive some sunlight, you would see the plant stems growing towards that part of the window receiving light. So in that growth, as we see the branch changing the direction towards the source of life, the source of light, sorry, that in 
itself is already the growth or movement of the plant. Another characteristic of living things is excretion. Excretion is the removal of toxic metabolic wastes from the cells of the body. So when human beings, for example, eat food, the unwanted food is gotten rid of through defi defecation and also urination. So as you can see in this photo here, we have seen or we are seeing individuals urinating, simply getting toxic substances out of their body that are not actually useful. So only living things undergo excretion. So excretion is a characteristic of living things. Another characteristic of living things is respiration. So respiration, what is it? It is the breakdown of food inside a living organism. It is vital for survival. So when living organisms eat food, the food undergoes digestion. And once it undergoes digestion, it is transported into the body cells where this food now is combined with oxygen under a process called oxidation that can be in English but in biology under the process called aerobic respiration. So the food is combined with the oxygen we breathe in and when it is combined the food now is broken down to produce energy carbon dioxide and some water. The energy is needed for our movements and also for our growth and also for the processes which the body needs like the pumping of blood by the heart also needs energy. The thinking involved, involved in our brains also needs energy. Talking as I'm talking right now I'm using the energy so the process by which food is broken down inside the living organism is what is known as respiration so only living organisms have this characteristic of respiration non-living organisms don't possess it so there are two types of respiration namely aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration involves the breaking down of glucose in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide, water, and the energy. While anaerobic respiration involves the incomplete breaking down of glucose in insufficient oxygen to form carbon dioxide, lactic acid, or alcohol, depending on the organism and lead to energy. So this anaerobic respiration usually happens when there's insufficient supply of oxygen, like in a situation of an athlete running. So an athlete running, because he's actually burning a lot of uh, food inside their body so there is an insufficient supply of oxygen and since there is insufficient supply of oxygen whatever food will be bent later on will not produce enough that that food won't have enough energy I mean oxygen to convert that food in the body completely into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So instead, the incomplete breaking down of food or glucose now results into 
the production also of lactic acid and this lactic acid is what makes a person feel pain in the muscles because in the muscles as they are running there is actually insufficient supply of energy and also because of insufficient supply of oxygen the production of lactic acid starts to happen and lactic acid produces pain in the muscles another characteristic of living things is reproduction Reproduction is the process by which living organisms produce their young ones. So it is a process by which even the population of living things is maintained. Because without reproduction, I mean, the population of living things won't continue and eventually living things may die and there will be no living things. So reproduction is only for living things for their continuity. So living things produce their young ones to replace the old ones. So only living things do that. So like this family you can see, they are producing new babies that are like them. So, to continue the human race. Two types of reproduction exist, namely sexual reproduction involving two parents and asexual reproduction involving one parent. So usually plants undergo asexual reproduction while these other living things like animals undergo sexual reproduction where they need two opposite sex individuals or living things come together and then reproduce their young ones after their kind. So another characteristic of living things is sensitivity. So sensitivity is the ability to detect and respond to a stimulus. So a stimulus is any change in the environment which causes a response from an organism. For example, a slab is also a stimulus because once an individual is slapped, they can respond either by shaking because they will sense that they have been slapped and they will have a pain because they have senses in their body which are able to detect a change on their body. So that characteristic of sensitivity to respond to any touch, any word spoken, is what we call sensitivity. So this characteristic is for living things. So at this point, if you have learned something from this video, you can like it, leave a like, subscribe if you are new and share but if this video hasn't pleased you or provided value to you give us a dislike and a comment telling us where we went wrong so that in our next video we will improve on it i love you all and see you in my next video Bye-bye for now.